All right, we got camp up. Porch up and everything. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Bo Camp 2020. Will this be the year that Dave gets a buck? Headquarters one, on site one. What he said. All right. Airstream. Yeah, that airstream was there when I was out here last summer too. Yeah, look at these guys getting ready to. Looks like they're pulling out those eye drop campers. This is a whole little commune of tents here. It doesn't look like there's a lot of bow hunters out this year. It looks like just a lot of families. That's a I've never seen it like this, so usually this time of year everybody's like I'm out. Yeah, every we usually only have like three or four other campers here in this whole place. We couldn't get a good spot because a lot of these empty spots are reserved for people that will be here later in the week or something. So Firm house. It is beautiful. I wish I could see it better. <laughs> You're beautiful too. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh -huh. Little firm house right there. Oh, you saw the car? You got home you'd be in complete peace yeah. you know that's what my mom is like is that another hunter or is that somebody parked yeah. so dave's good idea we got a bunch of stuff from the pallet from leftover pallets so dave <laughs> we apparently can't take this apart because it's nailed down pretty good <laughs> So, we have it over the fire. Let me see if I can get a proper picture of this. Wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. So this is our hillbilly fire to go with our hillbilly camp. Yeah. Because we're a bunch of hillbillies. Exactly. That's how it Us southern, uh, a country boy can survive. Remember that. <laughs> So yeah, that'll probably burn the rest of the afternoon, I think. <laughs> We're good. So tomorrow is Sunday, so I have to go home because I work in a church. And Dave's going to go hunting. This is Dave's setup. I'm trying to get out of the shot. This is Dave's bow setup. I can't remember. This is an Avenger, I think. A Bowtech Avenger. And he souped up so it flies a lot faster than it's supposed to. Um, he could tell us more about it, but this is what he hunts with. 
during bow season. He's one of the best shots I've ever seen. He could not shoot a bow for a year and he'll be bullseye the whole time. He's just an accurate shot. Then of course he's gonna do some fishing while we're out here. And yes, we are true hillbillies. We are burning pallet wood. And in true hillbilly fashion, we have yet another weird piece of wood burning. That's probably frightening everyone. The last one burned quite nicely. They chopped it in half. So I don't know. I'm bummed I have to go home tomorrow. But I'm gonna come up I'm gonna come back tomorrow after church and hang out for a while if he's not hunting. So we forgot some stuff, so we're gonna have to come back. But yeah. Hill Billy Bow Camp 2020. Alright, so oh, you know what? I gotta get it's the last here. full day of camp. And while I was gone back at work, Dave shot a buck. Is a 10 point buck. Look at that rack. It's lovely. Come on, stand near your trophy. You've done good. Yeah, nice buck. Yeah, lift his head up. He's too stiff. Yeah. I don't want to zero him. I want to get a shoulder mount for him. Yeah. And I don't want to leave the neck. I got a brush of mine. He's been, he's been going hikers on him. I don't think I would have got a shot at him if he wasn't focused on that doe. And the doe came in and I knew as long as I had that doe coming toward me that he was going to come in tow. That doe was going to tow him in to me. And uh, sure enough, he was just doing everything he could, whatever that doe told him to do. He was going <laughs> to do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 So that's what it was. Came in. Yep. So Dave hasn't gotten a deer in a few years, so yeah. this is victory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but he also he also hunts on state land, which is really high pressure. But uh, he saw a lot of deer this year, as opposed to previous years, mm -hmm. and he got one. So yeah. yay! And we had the back. What was it the back straps last night? What did oh, we the have? Tenderloins. The tenderloins. It was amazing. They were like <laughs> melt in your mouth. Yeah. Tender. So. Yeah, that's usually uh, deer camp meat there yeah, because uh, if you don't, they dry out. You know, they start to get, you know, the meat. You got to get them when they're fresh. Now the back straps and everything. The, the back straps are right in here. That's a really good part of the deer. Real tender. You know what I just realized? Huh. Our neighbor has a, a potty tent. Oh yeah. Where is it? Right there. It's a toilet tent. Is it? it what else would it be? That yeah. small. Yeah, maybe. That's a toilet tent. Gotta be. Well, we'll ask it. <laughs> so here's camp again. The last full day. Well, okay, so this is what happened. I got out there to my stand, and I'm sitting there, and I hear a deer. I look over, okay, there's a doe coming through. She's coming in out of the swamp, and she's gonna head up the ridge. 
and she slow, she started heading my way. I go, okay, cool. I said, no, I'll probably take her. And then, um, by instinct, I know that if there's a doe, you gotta watch to see if there's a buck, if she's towing a buck in. And sure enough, she was towing this buck in, a big monster buck. And he was focused on that doe. He wanted her at that doe, and she wasn't ready to love him. But he knew she was close. <laughs> so he, he was just doing whatever the doe told him to do. And he was so focused on that doe that he came in and uh, I saw what was happening and I needed to wait. So uh, sure enough, the doe kept coming my way. And uh, she stopped and laid down right by my tree stand. He stood there around that doe for a while. And then there was another doe that caught his focus. And he was looking over at this other doe like, hey, honey, are you ready to make love? I'm ready. And uh, so I, I cranked up on him. I had an arrow crank all powered up on him. And I had to hold the, I had to hold the shot for what seemed like eternity. Until, that, and he wasn't gonna, it was like in between these two trees. So like a tree that does a V like this. And he was in between those trees and I was waiting for him to come out behind the V. So I could get a good clean shot at him, but he wasn't, he wasn't, he was just standing there and he would not move. So I thought, I started focusing in between the trees into his vitals. And I thought, okay, if I can get an arrow between those trees and in him, he'll be done. And um, I'm shooting a high power bow, so it was gonna be fast. And I, my arrow was flat enough, it got between the trees and into his lung bag. I got him a double lung shot on him. So he uh, he took the arrow and kicked. I knew when I see his hind legs kick up like that with the donkey that he had been hit. And when he trotted past, he trotted like 30 feet. And then he stopped and he was trying to figure out what happened, what just happened. And he was standing there and then he started doing this number like he got real dizzy. And then he just kind of teetered and just fell over and uh, I was like yeah so he he fell over and he started kicking like he didn't know what happened to him and I thought okay he fell right there before he fell he gushed out a bunch of blood out of his mouth so I knew like lung okay, shot <laughs> lung shot and he was drowning it, that was a real good a, long, a double lung shot with a rage broadhead does a lot of damage so uh, he, 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 he couldn't even go far. And so he dropped right there, not far from my tree. And I, uh, I had to be really super still and quiet to let him wink now. And uh, so I waited and I watched him till he wicked out. And then I was, just came out of the tree. I didn't have to track him or anything, man. He was, he was right there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. That's your story and you're sticking to That's it? That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So now, I'm gonna tell you about my unsuccessful encounters. My first unsuccessful encounter was on a spike horn buck. And I had made a decision to turn my bow down because I'm getting older now. And so when the spike horn came in, I had such a hard time pulling the bow back, I was like, Finally got the bow back, but I, I jerked it too hard, and the arrow came off the off the string. So I had to let the bow down, and it's a high-powered bow, so it made a jerk, and it, it smacked on the side of the tree, and the, and the spike horn was like, "What just happened? What was that?" He knew something happened, but he wasn't sure what what happened. And uh, me, I'm just kicking myself. So he jumped back in the bush and then came back out to investigate again. So I'm like, I started looking at him. I go, ah, he's, he's a small spike. I'm gonna let him grow. So I let him walk. 
and I thought, okay, I hope I don't regret this decision. And uh, so I let him walk away. My second encounter was uh, two nights after I had a doe come in. And uh, I don't practice with my glasses. I use my glasses to spot deer, but I don't practice with my glasses on, so I don't, you know, crank up my bow on a, on a deer with my glasses on. And that's exactly what I did. I, the, the doe came in, I forgot to turn my light, my uh, sight pin on, and I had my glasses on. So I cranked up on the bow thinking I'm gonna have a hard time cranking this bow back. I better do it now. But I had my glasses on and my, my bow sight pin was shut off. So I'm kind of like lining up the shock. I was, couldn't line, I couldn't see the very good through the peep sight with my glasses on because like like you have glasses and you can't read a book with your glasses on if you're sighted like I am. Anyway, so I lined the shot up as best I could and sure enough I missed her. And uh, so she was hissing and stomping her feet at me and uh, that's kind of the way that I wasn't sure if I hit her or not. So I came back the next day and sure enough it was a dry arrow. And uh, but that the thing is that when she hissed and stomped her feet, she put this alarm set on the ground. And that made the other deer realize there's danger in this area. So I kind of just blew that whole hunting area out that night from missing her. So uh and uh, there was a couple of times where I had a buck, I had a six point buck, buck right into me and I wasn't even ready for him. And so he was so close to me, he was like 10 yards from me. And I, I, when I, he snuck up on me so quick, I didn't have time to react to him. So when he came in, I was like, oh crap, oh crap. I started reaching for my bow to get my bow cranked up and I, made some kind of unnatural noise and he was that close he could hear me breathe so after i clinked a couple times trying to get my bow and get ready for him he 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 had enough of that he like he went on full alert and he kind of like went away from me and uh so that was one blowout encounter and then i had uh and a couple of does, they were coming in and uh, they were just too far for a, a bit of a long shot on each double that I saw. Uh, and I saw a really nice seven point buck that came in one morning, but he was also a long shot, so I let him walk. I'd rather take a good clean shot than have a long questionable shot and not and just wound him in the leg or something and then feel horrible, you know, knowing that I shot a deer in a leg or something, you know. So that's pretty much all that. I, mean, I have seen a lot of deer this year, so it's been a good year. So it was like Christmas? It was like Christmas. Like you said earlier? Well, too, this, this season is like Christmas to all. This is the season that we wait for Santa to deliver. Weirdo. <laughs>recreational area so we're just north of Chelsea Michigan and this is a chain of lakes so as we look down this way there's canals that connect seven lakes together 
and it's really cool and there's a lot of campgrounds around here and there's a lot of state land for hunting that's why Jabe comes out here I mean just like the whole area is a uh, state hunting ground so this is Bruin Lake it's shaped like a bear in one of the Native American languages excuse me it means bear um, and that's because if you look at the satellite view of this lake it's shaped like a bear so just a little uh, note on where we are and what we're doing here so isn't it beautiful it's just gorgeous that kid looked like he was walking on water this is a cool boat oh, yeah. Packing up and getting ready to leave headquarters camp one. It's been a good hunting season. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Thank you.